We've seen that firms in an oligopoly have an incentive to enter a cartel agreement, where they agree to cooperate with one another to limit output in order to raise price. But we also saw that those firms have an incentive to cheat on that agreement, to not cooperate and to produce more than what they agreed to. We can model that in a simple game, where we have firm 1 on the vertical axis and firm 2 on the horizontal axis. Both firms have two choices. They can either cooperate with each other or not cooperate. Now, if they choose to cooperate, they choose to abide by the cartel agreement, they each get half of the monopoly profit, the largest profit they could possibly make in the industry. So let's suppose that that profit is 100. So they would get 100 each. But if you cooperate and I cheat on the agreement, I can make more profit than that. I'll get, say, a profit of 120 as firm one, and you'll only get a profit of, say, 60. And similarly, if I cooperate and abide by the agreement, you can make 120 by not cooperating, leaving me with only 60. And if neither one of us abides by the cartel agreement, we're back into the Corneau competition that we tried to get out of, and we both make less profit, say we both make a profit of 80. So now we can analyze this game and see what the Nash equilibrium is. If you decide to cooperate, I choose between 100 and 120. Not cooperating is a best response to you cooperating. If you don't cooperate, I choose between 60 and 80. 80 is better than 60, so not cooperating is also a best response to you not cooperating. In other words, for me, not cooperating is a best response to anything that you could do. That's called a dominant strategy. So a dominant strategy in a game occurs when you, there's a strategy that is a best response to any strategy by the opponent. In this case, it's a best response for me to not cooperate regardless of what you do. Therefore, not cooperating is a dominant strategy in the game. And when a game has a dominant strategy for each player, and your dominant strategy is to also not cooperate since the game is symmetric, then there's only a single Nash equilibrium in the game, and that is for both of us to play our dominant strategy. That will get us to this outcome. Neither one of us is going to cooperate. And it's going to get us to an outcome where we're both getting less than what we, what we could get if we just cooperated. Now notice that we end up here not because I don't trust you. We end up here because regardless of whether I trust you or not, it's best for me not to cooperate. Not cooperating is a dominant strategy, and that's the inherent problem that the firms in the cartel face. Now, any game that has this characteristic that players could cooperate or not cooperate, and not cooperating is the dominant strategy, resulting in an outcome that gets us less than what we could get if we just cooperated. Any game like that is called a prisoner's dilemma. And we'll find that there are lots of different kinds of prisoner's dilemmas in the real world. The game gets its original name from the original formulation, which was a formulation where we imagine that we have two prisoners. So we have prisoner 1 and prisoner 2. And they've been caught committing a crime. But the prosecutor suspects that they've actually committed a much worse crime as well. But he can't prove it. 
So he puts the two prisoners in separate rooms. And the prisoners, of course, have an implicit agreement with each other that they're not going to work with the prosecutor. They're going to cooperate with each other and deny anything the prosecutor is trying to pin on them. So they have two possible strategies to cooperate with one another or not cooperate. Cooperating with one another means not working with the prosecutor. Not cooperating with one another means working with the prosecutor. Now the prosecutor comes in and talks to each of the prisoners and says, look, if you guys cooperate with each other and you don't work with me, I can't prove the more severe crime. I can just get the maximum penalty for the crime that I can prove. And so you'll both end up with five years in jail. But if your colleague decides to stick by his agreement with you and doesn't work with me, and you do work with me, you don't cooperate with him, then I'm going to give you a break. You're only going to get one year in jail, but I'm going to nail your colleague with your testimony, and he's going to get 20 years in jail. Of course, if the reverse is true, and you decide to stick by your cooperation with him and you don't work with me but he does work with me then uh, you're gonna get the 20 years in jail you'll get the 20 years in jail and he'll only get one year in jail now if both of you work with me then I'll make a plea bargain with both of you and you'll both end up with 10 years in jail. Now in this game, the numbers are actually bad. The higher the numbers get, the worse they are for the two players because they're numbers of years in jail. But we can analyze the game in exactly the same way and say, if prisoner two decides to stick by the cooperation and not work with the prosecutor, then prisoner one has a choice between five years in jail and one year in jail. One year is better. So best response is to not cooperate and to work with the prosecutor. If prisoner two works with the prosecutor, then prisoner one has a choice between 20 years in jail and 10 years. 10 years is better. So not cooperating, in other words, working with the prosecutor is again a dominant strategy, is again a best response. So not cooperating is a best response to anything prisoner two does. So it's a dominant strategy for prisoner one. And similarly, it's a dominant strategy for prisoner two, which means we're going to end up with both of them going to jail for 10 years when they could have gotten away with only five years in jail each had they stuck by their agreement to cooperate with each other and not work with the prosecutor. So that was the original formulation. That's why the game is called a prisoner's dilemma. But the incentives of a prisoner's dilemma game are always the same. There's a dominant strategy to not cooperate, and the players could be better off if they both did cooperate. And that creates an issue for how players in games like this could find their way to cooperating when all the incentives say don't cooperate.